player to release number one on our, on our list is Joe Hayden of the Pittsburgh Steelers, the cornerback. Big name, was a good player with the Cleveland Browns, and the Steelers, he's not bad. He's still a very decent player, but with the amount of money that he's making, you would expect that the Steelers have to make that decision. Okay, do we move on from him at this point? So if we pull up uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers roster at this point and pull up how much money uh, it'll free up if you release Joe Hayden, you see on the side is the available cap space that they have, negative $7 million. They're going to have to trade uh, some players or release some players to try to free up the cap space. And then on the side, on the left-hand side, you're going to see the players that make the most amount of money. So you have Ben Roethlisberger may, obviously making the most amount of money. Then Joe Hayden is right there at number two. Now, the Steelers could go down the route of releasing Ben Roethlisberger. I know that Kevin Colbert, the general manager, has been talking about, yeah, this is the situation that we have so far. Ben Roethlisberger saying, I'll take a pay cut. I'll do whatever I want. Uh, or whatever I need to do in order to stay in Pittsburgh. I get it. But a realistic possibility of that happening, of Ben Roethlisberger being released or traded this offseason currently, uh, more than likely probably won't happen. It's probably, if it were to happen, probably going to happen next year. But this year, probably not. So you're going to have to make the decision on who else you can release. And it's going to have to be Joe Hayden at this point. The other players that are making a lot of money, they're pretty decent players. So if we go here to Joe Hayden, and we just hit this red X underneath the column that says release. And we hit that. All of a sudden, on the side, you see that on the gray, the dark gray? It gives that number, the updated number of $5 million in cap space. And the positive is now. So that's going to be a big decision that the Steelers are going to have to make. And we look right next to Joe Hayden's name where you see 2021 cap figure, that column. You see it got rid of the $15 million contract that he had, but you have to acquire... Uh, 2.9 million of dead money. Joe Hayden is number one on our list. Number two is going to be a wide receiver who could be on a little bit of a decline uh, this late in his NFL career, and that's Emmanuel Sanders. Good player, can still be productive when it matters, but Sanders is just costing way too much money. $10.5 million uh, that he's owed in 2021, and you want to get rid of uh, that amount of money to free up the cap space or the lack of cap space that you have. Negative $65 million, uh, or $70 million actually, is what the New Orleans Saints are at currently. So we look at the numbers for the contracts. Uh, they have a pretty decent defense, so I don't think that they wouldn't want to mess with Janoris Jenkins or Quan Alexander. But if you just keep on scrolling down and you look at the names, who do, who do they want to release at this point? Emmanuel Sanders makes the most logical sense. So if we just release them, and by the way, you can hit this, uh, let me scroll up so you guys can see it. The trade column, we can elect to trade a player as well. So if we wanted to trade Emmanuel Sanders to another wide receiver needy team, say for instance, the New York Jets, we elect them, you can process that trade and he's gone. So he's gone from the roster. You have to acquire a little bit of dead money, but that's fine. Look on the side right here. If that, that freaking ad, dang, man, these ads are brutal. Close out of these ads. You see on that gray side right there, the dark gray, negative 63 million. Okay, you freed up $7 million at that point, which is a lot of money for the Saints. So Emmanuel Sanders getting rid of him, trading him for a draft pick to a wide receiver needed team, whatever it may be. Realistic chance that that could happen for the New Orleans Saints. That's our number two player that could be cut or traded. Number three, this is obvious at this point, tight end Zach Ertz of the Philadelphia Eagles. He's not happy being there. The Philadelphia Eagles are ready to move on. They're ready for Dallas Goddard to be the number one tight end at this point. No distractions. They've already inquired uh, about trades or, or contacted other teams like the Colts and the Seahawks. So if we go over to the Philadelphia Eagles roster and then we see number seven down here, Zach Ertz is going to be the seventh most expensive player in 2021. Eagles want to get rid of him. They have no need for him at this point. So let's say, for instance, that they elect to release him because they cannot find any trade partners uh, going into 2021. They elect to release him. We hit the red X. You're going to see right there, they have to eat up $7.7 .7 million of dead money. But at this point, with the lack of production that Zach Ertz has been having with the relationship and him not wanting to play there anymore as well, more than likely, that's probably going to be the best bet is just to uh, eat up that $7.7 .7 million and not even worry about it. You get $5 million in return, so hey, not going to hurt at all. But, you know, he could be released if they don't find a trade partner, but we can trade him as well if you want to go ahead and play that game. We pull up the uh, trade window. Let's say, for instance, they trade him to the Seattle Seahawks. 
and you process that trade, you see the cap figure on the side, it's still the same amount of money if you were to release him as well. So you're still going to have to eat up that dead money regardless. But number three, Zach Ertz, realistic chance that he were to get traded or released. Number four on our list, if we want to keep with the tight end trend, Kyle Rudolph of the Minnesota Vikings. Let's pull up the Minnesota Vikings roster right here. We'll click update. We scroll down here to Kyle Rudolph, number eight, the eighth most expensive player going into 2021. Now, Rudolph, we expect to be happy with his release. We expect him to go to somewhere like Cincinnati or Jacksonville, a team that needs a tight end. But if he, for some reason, wants to take a hometown discount and is okay with being the number two tight end, no judgment. But if he wants to do that because he wants to stay in Minnesota, that's a okay. What the uh, Minnesota Vikings could do at that point is hit the uh, base salary restructure icon, which is this little recycle button icon right here in between the uh, red X and the trade icon. You hit that, you're going to see his salary went down from $9 million down to $5 million. And that's going to help out a lot, actually, for the Minnesota Vikings. You're going to see on the side $5.6 million now in the, uh, in the red. So you can elect to do that, but if we just want to reverse that and release him at that point, okay, you're still going to have to eat up some dead money. You're going to have to eat up $4.3 million, but you're going to have to get rid of Kyle Rudolph at that point as well. So if you want to keep him, you could restructure, but I don't know if the agent or Rudolph are going to be okay with that. Honestly, I feel like Rudolph is ready to move on at this point. So Kyle Rudolph, number four, free agent that could be let go. Number five, the tight end uh, train just continues on. Let's go to the Chicago Bears roster and let's talk about Jimmy Graham, who's 35 years old at this point and more than likely the tail end of his NFL career and the height and the prime done for. Had a decent season in Chicago, but with the amount of money that he's making with the emergence of Cole Komet as well, especially towards the last half of the season, I don't see the Bears wanting to keep Jimmy Graham and that expensive contract as well. So let's scroll down a little bit uh, to the Chicago Bears who aren't that far away from the positive as far as their cap space goes. But Jimmy Graham is up there as far as how much money he's going to be making. Uh, if we can find him right here, number seven, seventh most expensive player, an even $10 million that he's going to be making in 2021. Last year of his contract, you want to go ahead and just release him just because it just didn't work out in Chicago. So if you release him, I don't feel like they're going to find a trade partner for him. Release him. Yep, you eat up $3 million. That's okay. Look on the side. We now are, are in the positives for the Chicago Bears. $5 million that you have freed up for free agency that you can uh, spend on anyone else. So number five, Jimmy Graham is our player. Number six, we kind of talked about this a couple weeks ago when we talked about the Houston Texans. Uh, Duke Johnson, their running backs are expensive in Houston. And they could elect to get rid of David Johnson, who's going to be making eight, close to $9 million in 2021. But he had a pretty decent season. I feel like if the Texans, if you want any hope of keeping your players and want to keep them happy, your offensive players in Houston, you're going to have to have some sort of offensive weapon on that side of the ball because Will Fuller is going to be a free agent. Brandon Cooks is making way too much money. We're going to talk about him in a sec. Uh, Deshaun Watson wants out. You want some sort of life in your Houston, Texas offense, and I feel like you're going to keep David Johnson. But Duke Johnson, on the other hand, you could trade him to a, a running back needed team. It, it doesn't matter how, as far as a salary cap figure goes, so let's just go ahead and hit release right here. Boom. Look at that. Zero dollars in dead money. And look on the side, $12 million in cap space. Now, just to continue, he wasn't on our list, but we talked about the Houston Texans just to give you guys a recap a couple weeks ago. What the Houston Texans could do, because they're just in a terrible spot at this point, is trade Duke Johnson. You eat up no dead money at all. You get maybe a fourth, fifth, sixth rounder. That's okay. It's still a draft pick for a team that has no draft picks in the first two rounds. And then Brandon Cooks, who's been traded a lot. I get it. He's going to have to find another NFL team. Because if you scroll a little bit up, he's not on, on our list, but Brandon Cooks, we just wanted to highlight him real quick. Number three, the third most expensive player is Brandon Cooks. Uh, you could trade him and get a draft pick out of that. And on top of that, you free up some money if you wanted to re-sign Will Fuller, whoever it may be. But Duke Johnson is our official number six uh, player that could be released or traded on our list. Number seven, we have John Brown, another wide receiver of the Buffalo Bills. And the reason being is because if you looked at the way that that Bills offense operated, it seemed like you just have any sort of speed at wide receiver. And Josh Allen and that Bills offense can make it work. John Brown, great player. 
great player. But if last year taught us anything with him being injured, and even though he made some good plays here and there, they could do without him. They can make the NFL playoffs. They can have a good offense, and they can keep on uh, putting up some big numbers as well without John Brown. So if we go down to number six, 31 years old as well. He's in the last year of his contract in 2021. $9.5 million is what he's set to make. You could elect to release him. And right there, you only eat up $1.6 million of cap space or of dead money. And your cap space is now up to $10.4 million. So John Brown is our number seven player on our list. Number eight, this is kind of a... uh, I don't want to sound douchey by saying this, but let's just be realistic right here. Even though it is a feel-good story for Alex Smith, he's going to be very expensive going into 2021. So uh, glad he came back, really am. But if the Washington football team has to make some uh, pretty tough decisions as we pull up the Washington football team roster and uh, order of how many or have a how much money they have to give to their players, Alex Smith is at the top of the list. And if you're in need of a quarterback at this point, You don't want to keep your most expensive player who's a quarterback on your roster. You'd want to give him up. So Alex Smith set to make $24.4 million. Good player, but it's not worth that at this point. You already are well above average in cap space, but imagine if they were just to release Alex Smith or if Alex Smith were to restructure, whatever it may be. Let's first start off with the option of Alex Smith getting released. You release them, you eat up $10.8 million, but that's a sacrifice you're going to have to make in order to gain $14 million. That's okay. We hit the uh, plus sign, let's redo that. Let's hit restructure. What happens if we restructure the contract for Alex Smith? He goes down from $24 million down to $15 million. It's still not worth that at that point for the Washington football team. So let's just reverse that. Let's hit the red X. Let's release them. $45 million now you have freed up that you can use on the free agency period this offseason. So Alex Smith, feel good story, but number eight, uh, more than likely is going to get released by the Washington football team. Number nine and number 10 kind of coincide just because they're on the same team. Not only are they on the same team, but they play the same position. On the Las Vegas Raiders, Derek Carr and Marcus Mariota have been in discussions to be traded this offseason. People saying Marcus Mariota could be the next Ryan Tannehill. Didn't work out with his first team. Goes to another team. Could work out with them. For Derek Carr, he's been a topic of being traded for like three years, it seems like, at this point. But he's the most expensive player if we look at the list right now. Derek Carr. Let's say we release him. Okay? That gives us the uh, dead money of $2.5 million. To free up $20 million is well worth it, or you know, close to $20 million is well worth it. But I just hit that release button because it kind of tells us how much dead money they're going to have. But Derek Carr, more than likely, is going to get traded. So if we trade him to a team that is in need of a quarterback, for instance, the Chicago Bears, you get some draft picks out of them, process that trade, okay, now you have the same amount still there. So... Releasing and trading, you still acquire the same amount of dead money regardless of what that transaction is. But for Marcus Mariota, if you reverse it, if Derek Carr were to want, were to be the one to stay in Las Vegas and Marcus Mariota were to be the one to move on, let's go ahead and uh, redo that whole process and show you what happens if Marcus Mariota is the one to be dealt. Let's scroll down to Marcus Mariota, seventh on that team as far as how much money they're going to make. They play, they paid a lot of money for a backup quarterback just because they love the talent that Marcus Mariota brings to the table. $10.7 million is how much uh, he's going to be making in 2021. So if the Raiders elect to trade him, which would be the same amount of money as far as releasing goes, uh, let's just hit the release button just to show you how much money they're going to have to take on. And you see right there, $0.00 of dead money that they're going to have to take on. So the Raiders at that point, okay, let's trade them away. What's a team that needs a quarterback? Uh, The Washington football team, according to some rumors, is interested in Marcus Mariota. Let's process that trade, get some draft picks out of it, and now look on the side. You're closer and closer to the positives as far as cap space goes. But number nine and number 10, Marcus Mariota and Derek Carr on our free agent list. So to recap, Joe Hayden, Emmanuel Sanders, Zach Ertz, Kyle Rudolph, Jimmy Graham, Duke Johnson, John Brown, Alex Smith, Marcus Mariota, and Derek Carr. Ten players who could be released or traded this offseason. What do you think about that list? Leave your comments down below. 
interact with us. And if you feel like that there are any other players, offensive side, defensive side, special teams even, that some teams want to move on from to free up some money, let us know in the comments down below.